I've got three Power BI scenarios to help you understand Azure Active Directory better. That's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon and welcome to Guy in the Cube, a channel dedicated to helping you and your business gain insights by learning and growing on the Microsoft Business Intelligence stack. And I've had a couple conversations over the last week or two that had to do with Azure Active Directory. And typically when things come up, they come in themes and this was no exception. And a lot of this had to do with understanding the difference between Azure Active Directory and local Active Directory. I came up with three scenarios to try and help explain the difference. So hopefully this helps you. For our first scenario, we've got users that are in GuyInACube.com. These are actually in a local Active Directory and they are synced up to Azure Active Directory in their own tenant. These are the users that use Power BI. We then have an Azure VM and in that VM, we've got analysis services installed. That machine is in the battlestar.com domain. And the scenario here is that we want users in the GuyInACube.com Azure Active Directory tenant, the users that are using Power BI, we want them to be able to access analysis services that's in battlestar.com. And the requirement is, is that we do not have a trust between those two domains. The problem here is that the only information we get from Power BI is the UPN of the user through effective username. We have no additional information about this user. We didn't get a Windows token from Azure Active Directory because there is no Windows token in that context. And analysis services is only gonna be able to work with accounts that are in a local Active Directory or within another local Active Directory through a trust. In this case, we don't have either. And so when we go to connect to analysis services, that's gonna fail because it doesn't know what that user is. Regardless of what the account is on the Power BI or Azure Active Directory side, that account has to be represented locally in Active Directory. There's a couple of different ways you can work around this scenario. The first is that you can actually set up a trust between those domains. That's probably the easiest thing to do. In this case, the requirement was that we don't do that. So the second thing you could do is actually to use the map usernames feature and map it to a local Active Directory account that's in the battlestar.com domain. That could get a little tedious though, as you need to either have all the accounts there on the battlestar.com side, or you need to represent all of those accounts within the map usernames feature. Another option you have is to use the custom data option inside of the map username feature. This allows you to send any text that you want to analysis services through the custom data property of the connection string. And this allows you to use a lookup table inside of analysis services through row level security. Another scenario is Kerberos and its relationship with Azure Active Directory. This was in the context of the gateway of the on-premises data gateway. And the, th the question there was, do I need to use Kerberos when I'm using the gateway? This is a very complicated scenario and I'm not gonna go through all the details in this video as it would be a very long video, but understand that when you're using Azure Active Directory, there is no Kerberos play there. The Kerberos elements will come into play once you hit your local Active Directory. And that's where all the configuration happens is on accounts in your local Azure Active Directory. That has to do with your delegation settings and your service principal name or SPN settings. Now where Kerberos may come up is when you use your gateway and you connect to let's say SQL Server. And if the SPN is there, we're gonna use it and we're gonna use Kerberos to connect from the on-premises data gateway to SQL Server or the personal gateway to SQL Server. But this is just a single hop. Think of the gateway as a client application, so to speak. So Kerberos and delegation are not required, but Kerberos can be used in that scenario. Again, it has nothing to do with Azure Active Directory. It has nothing to do with the account or the username that would get passed through effective username to analysis services. It doesn't know anything about Azure Active Directory at that point or the accounts inside of Azure Active Directory. Those are separate. A similar scenario would be reporting services in SharePoint integrated mode. SharePoint uses claims authentication, not a Windows token. And when we get to reporting services, we need to convert that claims token to a Windows token in order to talk to SQL Server, if you're choosing to use Windows Auth with that data source. So we use the claims to Windows token service to accomplish that. And the claims to Windows token service is where the Kerberos piece takes place. Anything before that is claims auth and has nothing to do with Kerberos. The third scenario has to do with ADFS, which stands for Active Directory Federated Services. And this allows you to integrate your local Active Directory logins with Azure Active Directory. It can be used for other things as well as that, but in this context, it has to do with integrating with Azure Active Directory. 
So the thought here was that maybe I have a Windows token because I'm using ADFS and I can use that in conjunction with the gateway to analysis services for live connections. Think back to scenario one. In this case, if we look back at scenario one where we had two different domains and we have analysis services in an Azure VM, ADFS doesn't buy us anything because the scenario is still the same from the gateway's perspective to analysis services. The only information we have is the UPN that gets passed through effective username. Where ADFS helps you in that scenario is logging into Power BI. Once you're logged into Power BI, you're on the Azure Active Directory side of things and there is no Windows token. Also in the context of ADFS, we actually make a copy of your local Active Directory account into Azure Active Directory. This is done via DirSync through Azure AD Connect. And so your account's actually gonna be represented in two different locations, in Azure Active Directory and in your local Active Directory. So in the case of the gateway and analysis services, ADFS doesn't buy you anything there. Power BI is only aware of Azure Active Directory and analysis services is only aware of your local Active Directory. So whenever you're using accounts in either location, they have to be represented in those specific locations. Okay, do you have a scenario that's different from what I laid out here? I'd love to hear that. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Every Tuesday I do a technical item such as this, and every Thursday I do a news roundup where I find things that were interesting to me and share that out with you. Thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.